Hi, for discussion board two in HIUS 530, I chose to go with the Church of God. The Church of God was started in 1886 by R.G. Sperling at the Sheriff School Revival in Camp Creek, North Carolina. Him and his father, uh, Richard Sperling, had actually been Baptist at one point in time, but they had a falling out with the Baptist and the Methodist Church um, in their area, and they ended up forming their own denomination. Several of the reasons why they actually left the Baptist and had an issue with the Baptist was the first one being anti, they were anti-landmarkism. Landmarkism, according to one Baptist historian, which was quoted in the development of ecclesiology in the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee, a forgotten contribution by Dale M. Coulter, suggested that landmarkism plays the same role as apostolic succession for Catholics, validating their claims to be the only true church. So you have R.G. Sperling here going, wait a minute here. This doesn't sound right. The Baptists aren't the true church, just like the Catholics aren't the true church. He was also anti-Council of Nicaea. He saw the, the Council of Nicaea as having pitted Christian against Christian instead of being one group of Christians in, united in love and in a faith and belief in God. So the Church of God has nothing to do with the Council of Nicaea. They don't hold it to any of the foundations that are part of the Council of Nicaea. They are also anti-Baptist in general. They did not agree with the Baptists on this whole thought of the unbroken succession of church, which according to the Baptist church, and I grew up a fundament, independent fundamental Baptist, they go saying that the Baptist church dates all the way back to the church in Judea, which they another Baptist historian actually tried to say goes back to John the Baptist. Therefore, if John the Baptist was known as John the Baptist, even though we all know he was known as John the Baptist because he was he baptized Jesus. But the church, according to the Baptist, was Baptist in origin in Judea. Therefore, there's always been a Baptist church, according to the whole church. So that was another markedly Diff, huge difference between R.J. Sperling's thoughts and that of the Baptist Church. Now you are going to have a second significant leader within the Church of God and this is going to be A.J. Tomlinson. Now A.J. Tomlinson is going to introduce the whole Pentecostal idea which that's going to go back to the day of Pentecost in the Bible. You know the day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit came down and people were speaking in tongues in the church. This is where the whole idea of Pentecostal comes from. Now, he's going to introduce a couple of, diff of tenets that I personally, as a Baptist, don't agree with. And my husband, who actually grew up in the Church of God, actually says the same thing that I do. He doesn't think that these are correct as well. But he, according to all of the things that my husband was brought up with and knowing, along with the scholarly research I did uh, earlier, says that they believe that uh, Tomlinson actually introduces this idea that devout Christians were baptized by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, they had the gift of speaking in tongues. Well, if they didn't have this gift of speaking in tongues, then the Church of God is going, okay, you're backslidden or something because there's problems here between you and God that you can't speak in tongues. But not only that, they also believe that there are seven other gifts that individuals can be endowed with if they only ask. And those gifts are going to include interpretation, wisdom, word of knowledge, divine healing, working of miracles, prophecy, and discernment. Now, for them, they are going to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. This is going to be their source of information. They are going to say, okay, this is what the Bible says. If you seek these gifts, the Bible says you're going to get them. So they are a charismatic church. They are a Pentecostal and a holiness church. If you were to, were not Baptist and had, or if you were Baptist or Methodist or Episcopalian or Presbyterian and had never been in a Church of God service before, let me tell you, I have experienced it. And as someone who was raised Baptist, the first time I experienced somebody speaking in tongues, I was actually frightened. So they are very, very different from a Baptist. They are very different from most other churches. So thank you, and I hope you have learned a little bit of something.